Hello everyone, my name is Katie. I am the introverted reader and today is, as promised, <laughs> my review for our introverted reader book club pick of the month for February and that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is an historical fiction novel loosely based on William Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet. Our two main characters, Juliet and Roma, are on opposite sides. Um, they're both heirs to rival gangs. Roma is the heir to the White Flowers and Juliet is the heir to the Scarlet Gang. And basically they had a relationship years ago when they were like 15 years old. And then something happened. Like um, it said that Roma betrayed Juliet in some fashion. We don't find out what it is right away and I'll not divulge what it is because spoilers. But he betrays her um, and then after she goes away to live in New York. So she lived in New York for about four years and then obviously she came back to Shanghai and was just like I am going to become the leader of this gang. I'm going to get this show together and get and you know she's kind of on a hell-bent path constantly for revenge <laughs> like I find Juliet to be extremely extremely ruthless like this girl I've said this in one of my previous videos but this girl stabs first and asks questions later like she does not think about the consequences at all she's so hot-headed Roma on the other hand as a character I feel like I don't know him well enough I really really don't like he's he seems like a nice soft boy who's been through quite a lot, who has a lot of daddy issues. And normally I warm to that. You know I do, you know that's my weakness. But um, I still just, I just don't feel like he was fleshed out enough, in my opinion anyway. Um, and I feel like this book is definitely more plot driven rather than character driven because there's actually quite a few characters in here. I kind of feel like fell flat for me. Roma in particular and um, there's also um, two characters called Benedict and Marshall. Benedict is like the Benvolio, also known as Ro Romeo's uh, cousin in the original play. Um, but obviously his name is Benedict in this. And um, they also have a friend called Marshall, who is like the Mercutio, again from the original play. And the thing is, in Shakespeare's original play, Romeo and Mercutio are like best friends, like practically brothers. Like, and um, as the play goes on, you, you definitely see that. Like, they're very, very close. But, like, I never got that in this. Like, I got that Benedict and Marshall were friends, but Marshall was just, like, there. He's Korean, by the way, which I thought was really cool. He's Korean. And see, the thing is, as well, I feel like I'm jumping around. But speaking of that, just going off of Marshall being Korean, um, everybody just seems to know every language in the world. Like, like... <laughs> Julie, obviously Juliet can speak English because she lived in New York for four years, but like, and also her native Chinese, but like, she's also out here speaking Dutch. She's out here speaking Russian. She's out here, and like the scene with Roma as well. And like, I mean, I can understand. I mean, he, he'd lived, you know, um, I think if you lived in China for long enough, you would pick up the language. But at the same time, he's out here knowing English. He's out here knowing Dutch. He's out here knowing Korean to speak to Marshall. And it's like, how do you know all these languages? And like, I kind of, like at first it didn't really make sense to me, but then I remembered this is a point in Shanghai's history where all different races of people were living there. French people were living there. British people were living there. Americans were living there. Um, obviously Russians were living there. Um, so like there was like, it was like, it's kind of described it like, it's not just one big city. It's like divided into sections. So like all the different people have all these different sections and like there's the gangsters obviously and the gangsters used to have power and their power is slowly declining because the communists are rising up and the nationalists are doing whatever it is that they're doing. I don't know enough about Shanghai's history to even speak on the two of them. I know about the communists because <laughs> I remember learning about communists in school. But um, that was Russian, not um, Chinese. But anyway... Anyway, I thought all that was very, very interesting. The historical fiction side was really, really interesting. And I feel like Chloe Gong took a lot of inspiration from the diviners for this book because I kind of feel like she writes similar to the way Libba Bray kind of wrote the diviners because when I was reading the diviners, Libba Bray had such a way of like describing the atmosphere of New York and sort of 
giving you and sort of just like describing the city as if it was a living breathing thing rather than you know a big pile of buildings and whatever and the same with Chloe Gong like I really felt like Shanghai was like living and breathing and thriving and dying at the same time like I really really felt that and um it definitely like Shanghai is definitely a place that I want to visit like I just want to go around Asia period but every time I read a book like this that describes how that describes a city and how beautiful it is and like the Hongpu River and everything I'm like I want to go there so bad god willing one day I will but anyway um again characters didn't feel I wasn't I didn't feel any connection with the characters in this I still really enjoyed it for the plot like the plot was really good but um again um I don't feel like I know any of the characters but thank God for the plot because I am definitely going to be carrying on with the sequel because Chloe Gong recently showed off the cover and the title for the sequel. Don't know when the sequel is going to come out, but um, yeah, I am really excited about the sequel. All in all, I think I gave this four stars on Goodreads, but if I'm being honest, it's kind of more like a 3.5, mostly because of the characters. Oh, and as well, I should say, there is a trans character in this. I'm not going to tell you their name <laughs> because I don't want to ruin anything for you but there is a trans character in this and again I feel like I don't know her well enough it's a, it's a woman I feel like I don't know her well enough like I don't know there's just I just didn't feel very connected to the characters I just didn't feel like they were fleshed out enough that's probably the only thing that I like bluntly negative that I would say about this book not even negative it's like constructive whatever I don't know spin it whatever you may want to but Again, it matches my jumper, you see? Roses there, roses there. Wasn't intentional at all. Anyway, all in all, I enjoyed this book. I did, but I wanted more from my characters because I feel like I don't know them. But anyway, let me know if you read this along with me and whether you enjoyed it or did you read it last month? Did you read it right when it came out? Let me know. Did you feel the same way that I did? So yeah, that's my review on uh, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have more videos to come. Um, my Twitter and my Instagram are down below as always. And feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell um, so when you know when my videos are coming out. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!